Uh, Poughkeepsie, Gertie, my friend in Belgium, how are you doing? Uh, you have a deep, uh, had a, some great questions also. Which is more important to collect, CD or vinyl for you? Uh, as I said before, uh, I uh, think they're both equal as important because to me it's important that I have it on a physical format and then if it is on CD or vinyl uh, normally it doesn't matter uh, if I have if I uh, find a, an 80s record on CD I buy it just as much as I bought buy it on, on vinyl but if I have a CD version and a, a vinyl version uh, next to each other and I have to choose then of course I go for the vinyl so I guess vinyl is more important but uh, I, I really normally don't care because the most important thing is that I have it but I think that it's a little more status and a little uh, more fun to have it on vinyl uh, do I think do you think that vinyl records will survive in the near future uh, well, that was the same question that they asked in 1991 when the CD was taken over. Uh, and uh, through the entire 1994-95, you almost had to uh, hide <laughs> when, when you uh, have, went on a second-hand store and, and bought a, a vinyl record. And now um, we're here. Vinyl is hotter than ever. So... Uh, I don't think that uh, it will be just as popular all the time in the future, but I do think it will survive. I do think the CD will survive even if it isn't just as popular. There will always be places where you can buy CDs. Even uh, ar artists released uh, albums on vinyl during the 90s, even though they, it was treated like today, like um, it was uh, something rare more than something common but i still think it will be it will, will uh, survive in some form even though i don't think it will be just as popular uh, do you still listen to radio station these days for discovering new music mm, depends on which radio we're talking about i listen to web radio and uh, old radio shows that i found on the, at the internet and I had uh, cassette tapes. I collect old ra radio shows from the past. And through that and web radio, yes, I do uh, discover new music through that kind of radio. Uh, my 70s interest has grown a lot and I, I started to listen to uh, Pop Goes the 70s on Live 365, for instance. Uh, but the normal radio, no. I listen to one show a week. And that is a quiz show at the radio at the, at the Saturday mornings, uh, because they had bec the radio, normal radio, FM radio has become way too too bad. Way too the music has become way too bad, uh, and they're focusing more on uh, to play music for people who is interested in the commercial music in mainstream top 40 hits that is what they uh, for youngsters that is what they're playing uh, most right now so so i have no interest in listening on on the regular fm radio but web radio and old radio shows yes uh what do i think of streaming music these days uh realize that it is a way to i uh, i stream a web radio so I realized that is a way to uh, get to know new artists. But I think it is it will went over the line because I don't think that web radio can take over uh, regular listenings. I don't think it should. Which leads me to your other to, to your side question in this one. Do you still do we still need to buy albums or singles if we can get it for free? Yes, I do think we do. Because uh, I feel that uh, 
we can having everything at the computer is not good. If you want to spare the music for future generations, if future generations is going to find out what we are listening to, I think we need to save it at a, at a physical format. I don't think that Elvis or Beatles would be where they are today if uh, we at the 50s had a, had them just at a, at a computer. Uh, and uh, I think uh, future generations, future, future generations could buy the records at stores, even after they are long past, even since they long stopped being a mainstream popular at the hit charts, uh, they have been surviving through the years. Uh, and uh, I think the same goes here also. Uh, I don't think that, uh, I, I and uh, having it just on stream and having them uh, just at, as a file uh, it only makes music go in here and out here and we hardly remember what we're listening to we hardly remember what song it is it is what's a good song with that, that artist but I don't remember the song uh, it is uh, I don't like that music has been mo my life for, for um, almost my entire life uh, and uh, I hate to see it become something that uh, is just as an, on an iPod or that, that is a music file somewhere I want to have it in a physical format. I think it's important for future generations. So thank you, Gerdiv. Thank you very much for, for your questions, your very interesting questions. Rump Shaker 909. Uh, you asked uh, is Ken in Charleston, Carolina, South Carolina. Uh, always looking forward to your videos. Thank you very much. Uh, if uh, I could travel to any two cities in the world to do some record digging, where would it? Where would I go and why? First of all, New York would be very interesting to uh, go there and just walk a lot, uh, into all these record stores, leave second-hand stores, uh, finding uh, different kind of stuff. And there's also one city there where I imagine, I've never been there, but I imagine that, that there are so many record stores there, there also, and that is the store that I told in the Bobby C's question that I would move if I couldn't live in Sweden, London. Uh, I think that those cities are very, very interesting to find records in. Imagine how much British New Wave I was able to find in London. Wow. I would really like to go there to those cities one day. Uh, list two or three albums that I have purchased purchased uh, based on other VC members showing them. Uh, there are some. Then of course it, it depends on if I can find them because I, as I said I can only rely on thrift stores and uh, flea markets. But uh, Here's one, Rebel, John Miles. I don't remember who showed it. Uh, it was someone who, who showed Rebel by John Miles at the final community. And uh, I remember having a uh, Stranger in the City once before. I thought when I was a teen that that album was boring. But I gave John Miles another chance when I was an adult and bought this Rebel album uh, when I uh, heard saw uh, of these numbers showing it and it was really really awesome fantastic produced by uh, Alan Parsons then Joe Jackson and the man there were a lot of these numbers showing them I think that uh, B-size Jenny showed it among others so I got interested in it and I bought it uh, very very good album so so uh, and Dan Fogelberg, The Innocent Age, uh, which was shown, I think, by Björn Jakobsson's uh, record channel. Uh, and uh, I've been uh, thinking of buying Dan Fogelberg's albums for a long time, and I found this one. So I, I uh, gave it a chance, and it's a really, really relaxing and great album. Mm. Uh, 
uh, you'll notice I haven't started to creep further back into the 70s with some of my finds. That is indeed the fact. Uh, name two or three primarily 70s artists that I would like to explore more closely and add more to my collections. There are a lot. It's hard to pick just three. But uh, I said that I like very much David Bowie during the 80s, but I have very little from him during the 70s. So I would love to get a hold of more David Bowie from the 70s and discover more of uh, the kind of musician he was during the 70s. Then it's a band that I've listened a lot to at the web radio station I mentioned, uh, Pop Goes to 70s, and that is The Carpenters. Really relaxing, and I love the Carpenters music. But but I have only found one collection so far by them. So I would love to discover more Carpenters. And then there is a band that I, if this were, it was 20 years ago, I would have never imagined myself sitting here right now and, and uh, saying that I would love to have more of them. Because then I thought they were pretty boring. But now I can probably say that I would love to explore Blood, Sweat and Tears a whole lot more. Uh, I have three records so far by them and I would love to find some more of them because I discovered that they are really, really funky. Uh, not every song is is really great, but, but most of their songs are really, really great. So, uh, as for now, I choose David Bowie, Carpenters and Blood, Sweat and Tears. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much, Ken, for your great questions. Uh, the Vinyl Corner, Miko, uh, from Finland. Uh, my most valuable item in my collection, uh, both when it comes to uh, money and sentimental, when it comes to uh, which is most valuable at uh, the market so far of my records, uh, I showed it in a contest before, I think. Uh, and still, I think this one is the one that is most uh, uh, worth most money. The Pet Shop Boys Blood, uh, the Pet Shop Boys Bootleg, uh, Birmingham '91. Uh, not the best sound, maybe, but really, really great. Really awesome to have a Pet Shop Boys live album from the time when Pet Shop Boys uh, didn't do that much live performances. And I have it on DVD also. And uh, when it comes to uh, valuable for me personally, is once again the Alphaville album for every young. Uh, nostalgic uh, and uh, I have so many memories from this album. So uh, thank you very much uh, for your questions, Nico. And then we have Vinyl Potato, mm. uh, my buddy Way Will, uh, who asked, uh, if you had to destroy one record of your collection, which would it be and why? Uh, <laughs> well, I do uh, have a cleaning every year uh, that I take away albums that I no longer want to have in my collection. And uh, either one of them would be perfect. <laughs> uh, but if I'm going to take one, I don't have it right now, uh, right here. Uh, but uh, I have a classical record with uh, Beethoven, where, where, uh, uh, where uh, a totally unknown German uh, orchestra. Uh, conducted by Karl Rotter, I think, uh, is uh, playing uh, uh, Symphony Number no. Five, uh, and uh, no problem with that. But but I think uh, it's totally unknown orchestra, not all that 
famous conductor. I feel like I could bear without that one. But I have it still because he had been with me through all these years. Uh, it was one of the first uh, classical albums that I bought on, on vinyl. Uh, but uh, I really don't have any that much use for it. I just have it for some kind of a strange nostalgia. So I think uh, that would be my answer. Thank you for your question, Will. And finally, X Junkie NL, uh, my buddy Paul uh, in Netherlands, who uh, likes funk and jazz uh, and uh, smooth jazz and so on. Great musical taste, given much tip of great music. Uh, which is my favorite Swedish record? One more time. Then Vilda, uh, fantastic uh, s album that mixes uh, Swedish uh, old folk music with uh, uh, Swedish uh, light pop, you might call it, uh, and uh, with uh, very interesting lyrics, much s s music with satire and, and humor in it, and also very mysterious. Uh, uh, lyrics and mysterious production also. I love this one very very much. I have done it ever since I heard it the first time. Uh, from which artist do you have the most records in your collection? And I already answered that, Depeche Mode, with 17 or 18 records. Uh, have I ever bought a record that I already have in my collection by accident? Uh, is water wet? <laughs> many, many, many times. I don't think that there is any uh, record collector who hasn't done that. Uh, but I try to avoid it. I, I, I want to think that I have control over what I have. And most of the times I do. The uh, problem is that I am kind of person who uh, more... Uh, if I see a record that I'm hesitating, do I have this one or not? I'd rather give that one up and, and think that no, uh, I, I don't want any du duplicate because I haven't problem doing any, any sens sensible with it. Uh, I, and, uh, I don't have any use for it. But sometimes it do happen. And it happened, uh, I showed it in my last uh, vinyl CD update when I bought this Jimmy Smith album that I thought I didn't have, but it turned out that I do have it. So. Uh, of course, it happens. I don't think, as I said, I don't. I think it happens to every one of us in you know, the vinyl community. Well, most of us, anyway. So, thank you, Paul, for your great questions. I also got in a question in the very last minute uh, from a loyal follower uh, who has always commenting on my videos so I thought it would be a, a great idea to do a special response for that uh, I actually got in the question when uh, when I had actually been shooting uh, the response video but I felt like I wanted to have this long uh, the, the question is from Robert Balboni who is uh, I don't think he's making videos but he is a loyal follower on my videos and he have uh, he has a uh, commenting on it almost every video that I made so thank you very much Robert appreciate that you're watching and following my videos and your words uh, you wanted me to you asked about uh, uh, 50s and 60s music uh, and you're right I'm not a collector or, or uh, not that much listener of 50s or 60s music, especially not 50s. Well, I listen, of course, to 50s jazz, but, but I, I assume you mean 50s uh, rock music. Uh, I'm not going to say that I hate it. Uh, there are some really good 60s music, of course. Uh, after all, I'm, I'm grown up with a father who loves the 60s. Uh, music so, so uh, it, it has been with me since my childhood even though I, I uh, soon enough discovered the synthesizer 
and with that, uh, <laughs> my plans of becoming a 60s uh, collector fell apart. <laughs> but there are still a lot of 60s uh, songs that I like very, very much. There are some artists, but many of them are artists that are mainly from the 70s, but also made records during the 60s, such as Fleetwood Mac or uh, first Chicago albums and so on. Uh, maybe the first Deep Purple albums. Uh, but I have just for you, Robert, picked out some records from the 60s that I do own, that I think is great. April Stevens. Uh, EP with Teach Me Tiger. Wow, 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 wow. An EP. We have uh, Joe Jeffrey, record that I have shown during last year when I got it for free. My Pledge of Love from 1969, a great 60s soul album. And you wanted me to uh, pick out a uh, favorite artist or song from the 60s. Uh, I don't have that much favorite artists from the 60s that are uh, purely 60s artists. Uh, not much that fan of, of Beatles or, or, or Kings or Animals or something like that. Uh, even though Beatles have made some good songs. Uh, the closest thing I got was that I actually do like uh, a singer that had his peak during the late 60s, even though he made records also, I think, all the way into the 80s. Uh, and I'm talking about uh, Engelbert Humperdinck, uh, that I think, I, I always love the string arrangement that he uses uh, in this these early recordings. Uh, a Man Without Love, that song is actually a really, uh, it is uh, sentimental and it is a uh, sad little little song that, that really is uh, relaxing. So I actually do like Engelbert Humperdinck. But uh, my favorite song, or songs, uh, this is my favorite album from the 60s. Uh, it's an album that I have listened to many, many times. I like it very, very much. It is also by far the best album I know of this artist. I'm talking about Elvis from Elvis in Memphis in 1968. Uh, I love the song Any Day Now. I think that that song has been with me ever since childhood. And I still love it so much. So Any Day Now uh, is a great song, but I love this album. This is a fantastic album in my opinion. Uh, I love After Loving You, Wearing That Love on wearing that love on look uh, and uh, long black limousine what a great song that is and of course in the ghetto uh, can't uh, forget that so uh, my favorite album from the 60s so Robert I hope that you are uh, I hope that you are satisfied with the answers I thank you very much for your questions uh, very appreciated and speaking of late questions. Uh, the main rule of this Q&A was to leave the questions on my join the sub video. But uh, hey, I'm trying to entertain and uh, your vinyl community and make you having a good time. So um, I uh, took uh, a question from uh, a person that I know uh, personally. Uh, who calls himself Mr. Z. No, not Bobby Z again. Mr. Z. Uh, and uh, uh, I know him personally and he's a heavy metal fan. Uh, and he uh, gave me a challenge for this Q&A uh, in the last, last second. Uh, he wanted me to uh, Mm, we both agree on one thing, and that is that no matter what we do like in the first case, there always are exceptions of this mu this kind of music that we normally don't like. There are exceptions uh, of songs in music styles we normally don't like that actually are good. And he wanted me, he says, you know, that I'm not much of a hard rock fan. Never have been. I guess I discovered the synthesizer way too early. And, or maybe it has something to do with memories from childhood, I don't know. 
but uh, I never liked heavy metal all that much but uh, and he knows that and he gave me a challenge to name my top three favorite hard rock uh, slash heavy metal bands and my top three uh, hard rock slash heavy metal songs <laughs> Um, and uh, it may sound like a little bit bizarre because many of you at Vinyl Community knows that I'm no uh, hard rock fan. But there are exceptions. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of uh, hard rock songs that I actually do like. There are some heavy metal and or hard rock artists that I also do like. Uh, so uh, I managed to put a top three on each subject and I'm also going to say that at the top three hard rock heavy metal songs I'm not taking the ballads because hard rock ballads uh, is anyone can like a hard rock ballad but uh, it's uh, <laughs> uh, a real hard rock rocking song is another diff another thing so, so I have uh, uh, I have taken uh, top three hard rock songs, uh, rock songs, real rock songs, not ballads. Uh, so, uh, top three bands I'm taking at uh, number three a band that I have just one record with, but it is a great record that I actually do like. And uh, I discovered a song from this album as a kid, so that's why I have it. Rat. Uh, haven't heard not that much besides this album, but what I've heard I do like. Very, very, very uh, great produced. I love the production. Number two, Deep Purple. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have all that much Deep Purple albums because uh, they're also kind of expensive. Deep Purple albums, just as Kraftwerk albums that I mentioned before. But uh, I've always been a fan of uh, uh, their little early heavy metal style, uh, Smoke on the Water and Highway Star, all the slight and, and Strange Kind of Woman. So, so uh, Deep Purple. And some might debate with this number one, is it heavy metal or not? Is it hard rock or not? Uh, to me, he, he had a period when he was a great hard rocker. Number one, of course, people who know me are going to say Gary Moore. Uh, these albums where he made, before he became a blues artist, that they also made really great, but before that, he was a great hard rock artist. Fantastic guitar player. Always been a huge fan of, of Gary Moore. So these are my three favorite hard rock slash heavy metal artists. Uh, songs. Uh, the top three are by the same artists. I guess it's not to no one's surprise. But I can name a couple of honorable mentions just for you, Mr. Z. So you see that there are a lot of great hard rock uh, songs. Honorable mentions. Kiss, Tears Are Falling, song straight out of my childhood from my days when I listened to tracks a lot in the 80s. Uh, Vixen, the hard rock girl group with How Much Love from 1990. Uh, Alice Cooper, Bed of Nails, a Poison, also a great song. Uh, Rainbow, I Surrender, great song. And Deep Purple, of course, Smoke on the Water. Uh, with that, you guess that that song is not in my top three, even though I love it very, very much. Bon Jovi, Lay Your Hands on Me. Uh, there were bad Bon Jovi songs in the 80s, but also there were some really good ones. Uh, Helix, Rock You, Cult Classic. Uh, Motley Crue, Smoking, Smoking in the Boys Room. Also a, a classic song. 
Uh, and then, of course, there are some great ballads. Uh, Rhythm of Love with, with, the, with Scorpions, also to mention, as I already mentioned. But top three. Uh, I choose as number three. I sh uh, it's a Deep Purple song. That I don't have that song, unfortunately, on any physical format, unfortunately. Uh, original version of that. Original physical form that is. Uh, so I show this one, even though this song is not on this album. Uh, Deep Purple and a song from 1984 that I discovered as a child that I loved from the start that I still loves very much. That is a Deep Purple song called Knocking at Your Back Door that I think is really, really awesome, well made. Number three. And the song that I talked about from my childhood that I uh, is from this album is a song called Lay It Down that I think is a really, really great rock song. Uh, fantastic rock song. Uh, love the, the band's singing in choir here. Uh, love the guitars also. Then my number one pick it's pretty obvious, I think. Gary Moore, Over the Hills and Far Away. Could have picked any. I couldn't name that an honorable mention, of course. Out in the Fields with Phil Limit and G Gary Moore, also a classic of Friday on my mind. Uh, but I pick as my main choice Over the Hills and Far Away. I s love so much that solo with the guitar and the violin playing together. That one is fantastic. There are some great heavy metal, even though I'm not a that's not my main priority. So I hope that you are satisfied with that, Mr. Z. Uh, thank you for for questions. It's very fun to do it to <laughs> uh, get out of my comfort zone for once. And thank you each and every one who have uh, done asked questions and who have been uh, subscribing me and supporting me now steaming on towards new subscribers towards uh, new meetings new findings and uh, there are still a whole lot of contests that need to be responded to out there so uh, and soon I guess uh, vinyl and CD update also for May soon maybe so uh, until next time this was a pure pleasure answering your question. I had a lot of time doing this video. A lot of fun doing this video. Uh, so uh, I hope that you have enjoyed these answers and uh, that you have a really nice time wherever you are. So until next time, take care. Bye-bye.